Uh, hi, Gabrielle. Um, so today we're here with uh, Gabrielle Mays for our Prisoner Spotlight. Um, thank you for being here, Gabrielle. Appreciate it. Um, Thanks for having to me. Chatting with you. Um, so I guess we'll we'll start off. And first, I ask you. Um, so how how long have you been a member at St. Ed's? I've been a member for sixteen years. Wow, long time. Yeah. Been a little while. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, yeah. So when when you were originally uh, trying to figure out what church you were going to go to, what what made you pick St. Edwards? Well, I picked St. Edwards, I'm telling you, because it was, it had the most warmth and welcome. My first Sunday there, I will never forget this. So I'm, I was sitting pretty much where I'm sitting now on the right, sort of toward the back. And at when came passing of the peas, you know how that used to be at St. Edward's. Mm -hmm. And Salty and Lillian Wyatt from up front, they used to sit right behind the smalls. They came across the aisle and, and greeted me in nice. such a loving way. Nice. They were the best congregational greeters I have ever met. They had like radar for new people, you know, it's just diddle, 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 ah. <laughs> and they would always go and welcome them. And I don't know how many people um, had that same experience that I had. So that's why I came because of how warm the welcome was. And also because I was delighted by the diversity of the church. I really love that. Still that's do. Great. I think that that kind of thing also helps you uh, feel good about staying too. Absolutely. You know, so it's nice. Absolutely. That's really yeah. good. So um, tell me, what uh, what ministries are you a part of and what, what made you uh, join those? Well, I've done a lot of stuff over my 16 years. I, mm -hmm. I was in the vestry. I was a warden. I belonged to the women's spiritual development group, the social ministry. I, I worked in the nursery at fish fries and went to the hunger walk. I'm um, a Eucharistic visitor and a lay Eucharistic minister and a lector. So those are my liturgical roles. And um, and um, I'm, I was chair of the pastoral care uh, committee. I just stepped down from this cause I've been doing it for 10 years. So uh, I, I um, retired in May. And so this is part of my retirement, moving back a little bit and catching my breath and thinking about, okay, let me focus on what I really want to do now. And right. in church, what I really want to do is the bereavement uh, care ministry. Um, I've been doing that for about a year and a half. And, um, you know, we are an aging congregation. So deaths and losses are frequent. Right now, we have several members in our group who've had multiple losses, two, three people. And, um, you know, we need um, space and time for lament. As human beings, we all share a language of loss, but we sometimes need to be reminded that it's okay to, to grieve. And that's really what what our group is about. And um, I'm really glad we have it. And our wonderful priests have been very supportive of it. And I'm glad for that, very glad. Well, I know it's, it's definitely helped mom. So we, we, we appreciate, uh, you know, I know she does and, and I do as well. I know it helped her a lot. Um, so what, uh, what, if any uh, changes would you like to see in the future at St. Ed's? Well, um, like everybody else, of course, I would love to see more young families with children. Mm -hmm. I still remember 10 years ago, you know, Father Kent was doing these children's ser sermons and he'd be sitting up there on a little children's chair and a whole altar space would be crammed with little kids. Mm -hmm. It was the absolute best. It was so wonderful. And there's an energy a light-filled energy that comes from children that's really important in a church. And of course, they're the future right. of the church. And it's not like we don't have kids now. We do have kids. 
but uh, we don't have a lot of young families. We 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 have some in the, uh, our second service, um, but very few in the first service. So um, you know, we are all praying for that, and you are in the vestry. You're working on how can we get more young people to come. Right. Um, but meanwhile, the other thing that's really on my mind um, in working with the diversity of our congregation is that I would like to see more spiritual integration. And what I mean by that is um, basically where we would have a, a space and time where we would tell our faith stories, our spiritual biographies, um, the way you're learning at EFM. You know, I, I mean, how cool would it be once a month um, during coffee hours for us to sit around in a big circle and in the context of either a Bible study or something like the traditions of the Episcopal Church, feast days, seasons. I mean, there's so much. We have, we have such a rich culture. And to just say, okay, what was it like for you in Liberia, for you in the Caribbean, for you in a European country, when you had baptisms or Christmas or Pentecost or Lent or Easter or Advent? What did you guys do? Um, I think that would be wonderful. We've done a little bit of like that. Um, but if we did it regularly, and especially if we learned um, that people were going to take their turn to tell their story of how they came to faith in Christ, that's so special. I've heard a lot of wonderfully inspirational stories um, during my venues of ministry, you know, whether it was in the women's group or one on one in the Eucharistic visit. I mean, you know, um, they're gospel stories. You know, it's like mm -hmm. the gospel according to Mark or your mom or or um, Kathy Wachowski or Graciela or Jeanette or Lorenzo mm -hmm. or, you know, they, it, everybody, we are the word of God written to each other. And it would be great to make space and time for that on a regular basis. Because right. I I think it would, we would feel more of a sense of belonging with each other. And we would, of course, know each other better. Right. right. So that's one of the, that's sort of close to my heart because I love our diversity. And right. I feel that we don't know each other as well as we could, especially um, right. with the second service. Um, right. You know, we don't know each other well enough. Some people do, um, but not, I mean, you know, the, the, I think the majority of the first service wouldn't be able to name all the names of the second service. Never mind their story. Never mind. Why are we here together? Why do we worship together? So mm -hmm. that's kind of on my mind. And that's not to say that we haven't come miles since, we have this wonderful togetherness and, um, you know, whether it's the harvest festival with the Liberian and Caribbean folks or the, you know, Guadalupe. I mean, we have, you know, lovely traditions already that we do together. Yeah. I'm thinking it's more a of a personal connection. Mm -hmm. no. Well, definitely sounds like a great idea. Yeah, I'm sort of, leans into the next thing a little bit. Um, so when you when you think about the things going on at St. Edwards right now, do you feel encouraged at all? Yes, of course I do. Yes, yes, I do. Part of it is because it's it's my church family. You know, I brought my parents' ashes over from Germany and they're wow. buried in the memorial garden. Wow. So I'm invested in our church, you know, but not just in the dead. <laughs> right. You know, I, I am encouraged. I I guess what um what encourages me is people like yourself who who are energized to serve in the vestry and to um 
to increase your formation and to look for ministries. And you do it. I mean, I see you going around and welcoming people and being there for people who've had losses. That's a big deal. So that gives me a lot of hope and um, good energy as I look ahead to say that. Well, it's definitely good that we're, we're, I think we are there for one another. So it's, it is a big deal. So I guess we'll finish up with, uh, is, there, is there anything uh, you can tell us that maybe not a lot of folks at St. Ed's know about you? Well. Anything that you're willing to tell? <laughs> a, a funny story. Okay. Um, people, most people know that I grew up in Germany and mm-hmm. um, I came over here college age. And um, w- when I was still in Germany in high school, um, it was sort of the first time where I drifted away from my spirituality and my religion. My parents weren't religious people. Mm-hmm. A lot of Germans weren't after the war, you know, that sort of got you know, all the awful darkness can do that to people. It it right. pulls, you know, they, they kind of draw the curtains on anything religious. And it was like that in our house too. But that didn't bother me because I wanted to go to church. So I did. But when I was about oh, 15 or 16, I got really critical because this was a Catholic church. I got really critical of the same thing that people are critical of the Catholic church now. It's that it's patriarchal, it's sort of empty, it's not community building, you know, all the kinds of things. And so I kind of thought that too. And also um, in school, I had joined this little um, study group on Marxism. And I thought he had this right, you know, because really, the, you know, in some way, the basis of Marxism is love your neighbor. You know, I mean, everybody is the same. You know, we we belong to each other. Now, that's, of course, the idealized version of a 16-year-old. But so I joined this group, and and one night the phone rang, and my father goes on, you know, answers the phone, and and I hear him get pretty angry and sort of slam the phone down. I thought, what was that? And he came into the living room, and he said, there was somebody on the phone asking for comrade Gabrielle. <laughs> so that was really funny. It was very funny. My parents were not happy. They weren't happy about my church going, but this was worse. This was definitely worse in their mind. So, um, so I'm not comrade Gabrielle. Hopefully, I'm just sister Gabrielle now. Yes. Um, yeah. So that's kind of a funny story. Yeah, well, that's great. Probably nobody knows about me. <laughs> well, I think now they will. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yes. Well, thank you, Gabrielle, for, for being here tonight. It was definitely uh, a, a pleasure getting a chat with you and uh, getting to know you a little better. And, um, you know, look forward to talking to you some more eventually. Okay. Thanks right. for chatting. All right. Thank you. Okay. Good.